Okay, today we'll be discussing three-dimensional figures. Earlier we discussed two-dimensional figures. So we've previously we've identified and named two-dimensional figures and today we're going to identify and name three-dimensional figures and find surface area and volume. We have quite a bit of new vocabulary. Polyhedron, face, edge, vertex, prism, base, pyramid, cylinder, cone, sphere, regular polyhedron, platonic solid, surface area, and volume. Now we're going to talk about solids. A solid has all flat surfaces that enclose a single region of space called a polyhedron. So that's what we call a solid that encloses a, sp a space. Each flat surface is called a face. The line segments where, this, where the faces intersect, they're called edges. So here's an edge. Here's an edge. The point where three or more edges intersect is called a vertex. So here's edge one, edge two, and edge three. So it connects at a vertex. So this key concept contains examples and definitions of polyhedrons. There's prisms and pyramids. And when you think of a pyramid, you think of triangular faces, right? Now a pyramid is a polyhedron that contains three or more triangular faces. So this one has one here, one in the back. So this one contains four triangular faces, but it contains a polygon polygonal base. So it could be a rectangle or a square. So that's what you call a pyramid. A prism is a polyhedron. It has two parallel congruent faces called bases. Now, here we think of bases as what it sits on, but sometimes it'll be turned on its side. So what you have to do is look for the two that are parallel and congruent. That will tell you that that is the base. That's going to be very important later on. These are not polyhedrons. A cylinder is not a polyhedron because it has a circular base. A cone also has a circular base. Um, and also this has a um, curved surface. And then there's a sphere, of course, that is curved all the way around. It has no faces, no edges, or vertices. On um, page 67, you'll see some examples of all different kinds of polyhedra. That's plural for a polyhedron. And they're named by the shape of their bases. So let's learn about how to identify these solids. We're to determine whether this solid is a polyhedron, then identify the solid, and if it is a polyhedron, we're going to name the bases, faces, edges, and vertices. It might be a good idea if you were to try to redraw this figure, because it's going to disappear here in a minute when I go to the next page. So pause for a moment and draw the figure. Okay, this solid is formed by polygonal faces, so it is a polyhedron. The bases are rectangles, so this solid is a rectangular prism, and it's named by the base. The base is a rectangle, so it's a rectangular prism. And I'll let you pause for a moment. Why don't you write these answers down, and then I'm going to scroll back very quickly to let you look at the figure. Okay, now you can compare, compare the answers. So pause a moment, go back and forth until you are understanding. Now we're to determine whether this solid is a polyhedron. Then identify the solid. If it is a polyhedron, name the bases, faces, and edges, and the vertices. So this form, solid is formed by polygonal faces. So it is a polyhedron. The bases are hexagons. Let's look at that. Hexagons. Sure enough. So is it, it is a hexagonal prism. Say that three times real fast. Man, I can't. So those are the bases. 
It is a hexagon. How many sides does a hexagon have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Good job. And then all the faces, so these are all the polygons. The edges are all those line segments. And the vertices are where three of those segments meet. How about this one? What shape is that base? The solid has a curved surface, so it is not a polyhedron. The base is a circle. And there's one vertex, so it's a cone. So the base is a circle T. The ver it has one vertex that was at the top, but it has no faces or edges. Okay, time to check your progress. First of all, I need you to identify the solid. So pause for a moment and study this figure, and then come back and we'll find out you've got the right answer. This one is a triangular pyramid. Notice that this is a triangle that it has for a base. How about this one? You got that one very quickly, didn't you? That's a cylinder. Okay, let's identify this one. Now, this is one of those that the bases are actually the two ends. These are the ones that are congruent. Because if you look at this base, if you're, if you're thinking this is the base, that's not right because it's not the same shape. It's not parallel. It's, so that's why it's a triangular base. So it's a triangular prism. Now these are what's called platonic solids. Now, they're named after Plato. He was a philosopher, a mathematician, and scientist who lived in Athens, Greece. He's best known for founding a school known as the Academy, and uh, they studied mathematics. Plato used these extensively. These five are the main ones he used extensively. A tetrahedron, and notice they're all, they're called regular polyhedrons because all the faces have the same size. So it has four equilateral triangular faces. There is a hexahedron, or we call it a cube, an octahedron, a dodecahedron, an icosahedron. Look at that, 20 equilateral triangular faces. Now I've seen um, diamonds in wedding rings shaped like an icosahedron. Beautiful. Oh, I've seen them like a dodecahedron too. Another key concept we're going to be studying is surface area and volume. And I would really like for you to take these notes, these uh, formulas down in your notes. You need to note that T stands for total surface area. Um, I will tell you, if you see me working these on the board, I usually put SA for surface area. I usually don't put T. I've never really put T before. I guess that's not how it's trained. Uh, something that's different, this big letter B, is the area of the base, and that's, that's different. Uh, P is for perimeter. H is the height of the solid. That's the straight height. I've always called the H the straight height, and I've always called the L the slant height. And of course we have the radius. So there's a major difference between the H and the L. So pause this just a moment and get those formulas down and we'll go on and we'll work with them. Surface area is a two-dimensional measurement of the surface of a solid figure. The surface area of a polyhedron is simply the sum of the area of each face. So we've got formulas here, but if you forget the formula, know that you can find the area of this face and add it to the area of the back, the area of the front, the area of the bottom, and the area of the two sides. Add them all up and you can still get there. It's just like uh, if you had a uh, some kind of box and you wanted to know uh, how much area you had to paint. That would be your surface area. Now if you had this box and you wanted to fill it with marbles, that would be the volume. So that's the amount of space contained within the solid formula or figure. So let's play with this a little bit. Uh, we're to find the surface area and the volume of this cone. So we know that the surface area from the formulas we just wrote down is pi times the radius times the slant height plus pi times radius squared. Now, the radius is 3. The slant height, see this is the straight height, 4 is. Slant height is the 5. goes at a slant. 
So that's why we need to know the difference between straight height and slant height. Plus pi times 3 squared. So that's approximately 75.54 centimeters squared. The volume from our formula uh, page is one-third pi r squared h. Now this time we're using straight height. So it's a third of times pi times 3 squared times 4. 12 pi, which is approximately 37.7 centimeters cubed. This is a little different. So volume is in cubed, surface area is square. So the cone has a surface area of about 75.4 centimeters squared and a volume of about 37 and 7 tenths centimeters cubed. Oh, now it's time for us to check our progress. So go back and look at your formulas and find the surface area and the volume of this triangular prism. Okay, what I did quickly is what I, I told you earlier is just to find the surface area of all these sides. So I took, I took this um, bottom, 8 times 12, and I got 96 for this bottom section. Then I did 12 times 6, so this, I know this back side is 12 times 6, so I got the area of that rectangle. Then I had to find out what this measurement was. I used the Pythagorean theorem, because I knew 6 squared plus 8 squared is equal to this side squared. When I took the square root, I found out that this was 10. So I know 10 times 12 gave me the area of this darker blue shade. Now for these sides, I know the area of a triangle is 1 half times the base times the height, so 1 half 6 times 8. And I had two of those. I have this side and this other side. Those are the bases, even though they're on the side. And so that's 48. So 96 plus 72 plus 120 plus 48. Yeah, I got a surface area of 336 feet squared. Now for the volume, it's 2 times, see what, nope, 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 not 2 times. It's the perimeter of the base times the height. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking for volume. It's the area of the base times height. Okay, area of the base. The area of the base is 24 times 12. This 12 is actually its height because this is the base. And we've already said 1 half of 6 times 8 that gave us 24. So 24 times 12, 288 feet cubed. Alright, so let's mix it up a little bit. Hmm, Mike is creating a mailing tube. So what shape is that? Yeah, we're talking a cylinder, aren't we? Uh, to use to mail posters and, ar and architectural plans. The diameter of the base is 3 and 3 fourths inches, and the height is 2 and 2 thirds feet. I see a problem here, inches and feet. So I'm going to have to do some conversions. Find the amount of cardboard Mike needs to make the tube. So the amount of material used to make the tube would be equivalent to the surface area of the cylinder. So how about let's change feet to inches. Okay. So the surface area, the formula for the surface area of a cylinder is 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r squared. Now to find the uh, radius, I took that 3 and 3 quarters, which is 3.75 diameter, and I divided it in 2. That's how you get 1.875. We're told the height is 30, or is 2 and 2 thirds feet. So that uh, changes to 32 inches, because 2 and 2 thirds is 8 thirds times 12 over 1, gives us 32 inches. So the area is approximately 399 and 1 tenths. So he needs about 399 and 1 tenth square inches of cardboard to make the tube. Okay, now we're going to find the volume. Well, we know the formula for volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. We've already found out what the radius of the height is from the previous problem, so all we have to do is the math. So we use a calculator, and the volume of the tube is about 353 and 4 tenths 
cubic inches. Time to check your progress. So this one's not quite as um, detailed as the other one. So good. Go back and look at your formulas and fill in the numbers and come back and we'll find out that you got the right answer. We know this is a rectangular prism. The length is 14 inches. I mean, sorry, the length is 18 inches. The, the width is 14 inches and the height is 10 inches. The formula for the surface area of a rectangular prism is the perimeter times the height plus two times the big B or the area of the base. So I'm going to have um, 64 times 10 plus 2 times 252. So I get the surface area is 1,144 inches. To find that 64, I went 2 times 18 plus 2 times 14. That's where I got my 64. And for the area of the base, length times width, 18 times 14 gives me 252. So that's where I got those numbers to substitute into the formula. Now using the same problem, they want us to find the volume. So pause for a moment, then come back and check your answer. Okay, we've already found out what we needed from the previous problem. The area of the base we already knew was 252 and the height is 10. To find the volume was the area of the base times height, so 2,520 inches cubed. Good job, folks. Now you're ready to begin the practice.